Well, good morning. This is John MacArthur. Let's get started. Uh, this is uh, November 13, 2012. This is our uh, uh, Peer Insight Research Meeting, and today's topic uh, dis of discussion is Enterprise Class Data Protection on a Small Business Budget. Uh, just a few reminders before we get started. If you're not speaking, please mute your line with star six, and you can unmute with star six. This so. conference is being recorded. And as a reminder, the conference call is being, record is being recorded. Um, if anyone is tweeting today and wants to tweet out comments, uh, we'll try to monitor that. If you have questions, um, uh, uh, Dave Vellante, who's here in the studio with me, will uh, watch the, uh, the tweets, uh, hashtag Wikibon. Um, so W-I-K-I-B-O-N. Uh, so any questions or comments, uh, just uh, please tweet those out. We have with us today Paul Martin. Paul is the IT manager at Pool and & Grain. And I met Paul at a recent uh, VMware Technology User Group uh, uh, meeting here in uh, Marlboro, Massachusetts, just down the street from the Wikibon offices. And so we were having an interesting discussion. And I asked uh, Paul if he would be willing to come on and discuss um, uh, his environment, his challenges, and some of the, things, some of the technologies that he's looking at to try to um, improve his uh, data protection capabilities. So, uh, Paul, thanks for uh, joining us today. Thanks for having me. All right. Um, we also have with us uh, David Floyer on the line. I, I, think, I, I think I heard uh, David on. Uh, Nick Allen, also a Wikibon analyst, and here in the studio with me is Dave Vellante. Dave and uh, David are co-founders of Wikibon. So, uh, so Paul, why don't you? Uh, the the topic of today's discussion is enterprise class data protection on a small business budget, and you really do have a, sm a, a small business budget. Why don't you start by just telling us a little bit about Pool and Grain, and um, and then the, uh, some of the uh, uh, challenges that you're trying to uh, trying to address. All right, John. Thanks. Um, yeah, Pool and Grain uh, has uh, been around since 1932. We are a uh, fourth generation Vermont family owned company. Uh, we've got three manufacturing facilities, two in northern Vermont, uh, one of which I'm, I happen to be uh, uh, at currently our, our corporate office up in, uh, up, up in Newport, Vermont. Um, in addition to the two Vermont locations, we also have a, a manufacturing facility up in upstate New York. Um, those three locations uh, keep me quite busy. I'm the only IT guy. Uh, we've got uh, two data centers, uh, one primary here at the corporate office and then one disaster recovery location. And uh, we service uh, about 120 independently owned distributorships uh, all around the uh, northeastern part of the United States. Um, we've, uh, we're a small company, but, uh, but, but we do service a, uh, serve and service a, a large population. Um, we, uh, I mean, as, as such, uh, we, we find ourselves kind of in, in a unique position in that uh, we, uh, our environment has, uh, we, we see very real problems. We see very real uh, IT issues that, that, that are occurring today, even in, in our limited environment, because we are trying to do so much with so little. Um, and that being the case is kind of what has, has brought us here today. How, how many? Uh, we find um, ourselves in a no, go ahead. No, I was going to say we, we, we find ourselves in a position where our our backup current backup infrastructure isn't meeting our needs. So go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, that's fine. Um, tell us a little bit about your current backup situation uh, environment, um, technologies that you're using, uh, what's working, what's not working, and, and where the challenges are. All right. Uh, in uh, in 2008, we virtualized our, our entire infrastructure. <laughs> Uh, and it's worked well for us. Uh, we've adopted Veeam as a uh, as a backup solution, um, backup software provider, uh, and that um, that software is backing up to a uh, primary backup repository uh, uh, made by uh, Exagrid. The uh, Exagrid is being is, is deduping and uh, and um, replicating itself to a yeah, disaster recovery location, which is one of my remote offices. Um, and right now, we find ourselves uh, running out of capacity on those extra grid devices. On both sides? On, on both sides, you're running out of capacity? 
Yeah, initially uh, a couple of months ago, I started really noticing that the the uh, the backup capacity at my DR location. It's a smaller capacity exagrid um, because we weren't sending all of our virtual machines, we weren't sending all of them over to the DR site. Uh, the thought was that we, we would only go ahead and, and send critical data over. Um, so initially what, what I was seeing was that the, uh, the DR uh, locations exagrid was, was filling up. Um, at the same time too, I mean it goes without saying that the primary one was, was also you know, starting to, to fill up, but it wasn't as noticeable because it's a higher capacity box. Um, now we're, we're nearing budget time, we're nearing the end of the year, and I'm also nearing the end of capacity on that, on that uh, DR location's extra grid appliance. Um, I also finally uh, noticed that the, uh, the primary location's extra grid is, uh, is also in a position where, where it's starting to, to run out of, out of capacity. So now, initially, I thought that we were going to have to buy capacity for the DR location, but as it really turns out, um, the true fix is going to going to have to be to uh, to buy additional capacity for both sides, um, or figure out some way to uh, to give myself more storage capacity at both locations. This is always um, this is always kind of a standard standard question. Uh, what's, what do you have a sense of what your data growth rate is? Right now, what we have found, what we have found, we bought the first uh, exagrid in two thousand eight. We bought the second one in two thousand ten. And based on what I've seen on those two appliances, we're growing at just under about a terabyte a year. Uh, our our, our uh, backup data is growing for just under a terabyte a year. Okay. And and what are the right now? What are the applications that are driving the growth? Um, primary, primarily, the uh, I'd have to say that the, the the biggest application driving the growth is uh, is, is our line of business software. Um, I mean. You can do whatever you want as far as, as you know, limiting people's mailbox sizes and, and telling them to, to delete old files they may no longer need. But you know, unfortunately, to run the business and then the largest offender, uh, for lack of a better word, in the uh, in the capacity uh, area right now is, is our is our ERP, our our line of business software. Okay. So what are the what are some of the options that you've considered in terms of um, dealing with the uh, the growth in data and dealing with the um, the need to, to back up and then replicate to the recovery site. Well, I've, I've visited this actually a number of times in the past, um, directly or indirectly, depending on your point of view, um, in that what I've done is instead of replicating all of my servers, uh, the first thing, first step that I did was I started separating out the critical servers from the non-critical ones. Um, and then to, uh, to uh, Take that a step further. We have, you know, tried to prioritize and, and, and take ones out that maybe weren't quite as critical. We we've uh, um, you know, added capacity. We uh, over, over time we've uh, we've we've trimmed files uh, over time. We've changed retention policies. I think I'm down to like an eight-day retention policy on uh, on my file server. Ideally, I like to keep a couple of weeks. I mean. It's not out of the question for somebody to come up to you and say they need a spreadsheet that uh, they overwrote from a couple of weeks ago. It happens to all of us. Um, but I've had to adjust my retention policies because of, uh, because of the capacity constraints that I have. Um, and now uh, I'm looking at the hopefully the ultimate solution of uh, of, of, uh, of cloud backup. And, 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 today. and for for you, what's attractive about cloud backup? I think. First and foremost, the uh, I don't want to say limitless capacity, but nearly limitless capacity. I, I, I don't like, and I, and I think it's an extremely inefficient waste of time to have to keep going back and revisiting um, the same problem over and over again. Now, I grant you if the problem was fixed right the first time, but, in, but really who knows how much your data is going to grow and how much your business is going to grow. In a perfect world, both would, would, would grow exponentially. Um, the business would grow, and as a result of the business growing, the data would as well. Um, I think that, uh, that a driver for me is going to is going to be cost. Um, it's going to be a huge cost, or I'm sorry, a huge driver for me. Um, ease of use and uh, and the fact uh, for me, it needs to really implement with uh, with the technologies that I've that I've already worked so hard to to put into place, and that seem to be working so well for me. Um, so, the, there needs to so, be so the Veeam, a, so the Veeam so the Veeam soft. I'm sorry, the Veeam software is working well for you. And the 
and the exagrid is working well for you. Is, it, is that what I'm hearing? So you want to incorporate They, they are both working well. The problem is that, that the exagrid appliance is, is a costly solution. It works extremely well, but, uh, but it's cost prohibitive for me to continue, I believe. Um, using using Exagrid as my uh, as my backup storage solution. Right. So, Paul, this is Dave Vellante. I wonder if you could just address um, some of the the hi higher level trends here. We've seen for the last say five to seven years, data deduplication really came in as a way to reduce cost, and it it sounds like in your case it might have. Uh, the, the solution might have uh, addressed some kind of a near-term tactical problem, but it didn't solve your issue long-term, which seems to be uh, elasticity. You, you want the ability to just basically dial up capacity when you need it. So the, the data deduplication is a, kind of a one-time hit that draws capacity down, and then you're back to adding, adding more capacity. Am, am I getting that right? In, in my case, and, and I obviously can't speak for everyone, but in my case, I think the biggest advantage to deduplication was realized when I... Entry, entry and exit chimes are off. Um, I mean, sorry, uh, uh, sorry, Paul. Up. Sorry, Paul. We got, we got cut out there for a second. Can you just repeat what you were saying about in your case? Yeah, absolutely. Um, deduplication, I, I think the, the, the biggest advantage uh, to, to deduplication is, uh, is realized when you first put it into place. Um, the first, the, the largest advantage, the largest um, amount of savings that, that you'll see is when you first implement deduplication. After that, it's business as usual. I mean, backups as usual. Is the amount of data is the amount of data is the amount of data. And over time, that's just, it's just going to continue to grow. It's just the nature of the beast. Um, you, it's nice to say that, yeah, deduplication is, 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 the, is, is the answer to all of our problems, but after that initial implementation where you see all of the uh, all of the duplicate blocks or all of the duplicate files all of a sudden you know fizzle down and 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 you know down down to their their smallest form once that's been done i mean you're just you're just backing up data after that can can, can you talk about I, more really cool. can, can you talk a little bit more about your your cloud backup solution and and specifically what you did all oh, right right now uh, if I get if I've got that right, you're you're looking at, but you haven't implemented cloud backup, correct? That's correct. And in fact, I'm I'm looking at a lot of different players. Um, I've I've talked to some of them that have been very very helpful. I've talked to, interestingly enough, a couple of them that haven't been very helpful. Um, I mean, first and foremost, I'm coming in, into this, uh, you know, really uh, with with a learning curve ahead of me. I, I don't understand the technology. I don't. I shouldn't say that I don't. I didn't understand the technology. Uh, not that I'm any expert now, but I, I, I didn't understand the requirements of it. I didn't understand the costs behind it. Um, I mean, like any other project in, in our world, we, we, there's, there's a learning curve ahead of it, and, and you know, there, there are a lot of, a lot of things that, that, that you don't necessarily know up front going into it. And, and thankfully, I did run into a couple of people that, that were very helpful in sharing the, uh, the information that I needed. Um, but yeah, to, to answer your question, I've, I've looked at, uh, gosh, I, I'm, I'm going to guess probably eight, ten, maybe twelve different cloud providers uh, so far, and um, I'm I'm only a little bit closer than I was uh, two weeks ago to finding a uh, a, uh, a solution. So, but basically, the, the the justification, the business case is, as we were talking about before, that ability to get capacity on demand. You you call it nearly infinite. Um, so. What have you learned in your research, and, and what are your concerns, and you know how, how are you evaluating the the risks and the rewards? And, 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 uh, yeah. and uh, it, you know which which technologies of, uh, do you think are promising, and which are not? Well, I mean, given my my position, uh, um, IT manager of an SMB, my my budgets are, are very limited. Um, so cost is going to have to be a huge consideration for me. Of all of the solutions that I've found, um, I mean, I don't know if you want me to say specifically who I've found for providers. No, absolutely, but, uh, absolutely. Typical, <laughs> this is a this is a this is a peer insight community, and so we we want people to share both their pain and their and their progress, so that uh, other people can benefit all right, from well, it. The 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 one uh, the one provider that, that seemed to really stick out or stand out for me um, 
Amazon has a has a project called uh, called the Glacier Project. The the resounding theme, regardless of the provider that you're going with, um, seems to be that they all charge on a per gigabyte uh, data amount per month. Um, translated, that comes to, down to, in, in Amazon's case, one penny per gig per month. Right now, I'm I'm looking at about about probably three to five terabytes uh, that I'm that I have for for data. That includes um, that includes my, my retained data as well, my, my, my uh, retention policy. Um, so the so so that one penny per gigabyte per month um, very easily fits into the uh, the budget that we've that we've allowed for for data growth for next year. Does that also um, enable you to first, start? Yeah. Does that also enable you to start protecting applications that you're not currently protecting? No, and 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 that penny. Um, is only for the cloud service. There's actually two pieces to that. Not only do you need to pay for, for a cloud service service provider, but you also need to pay for a cloud enabler. You need to have somebody sitting in the middle that's going to translate me into the cloud language and the cloud into my language. Um, some broker that needs to sit in, in the middle to uh, act as a, as a caching appliance. I mean, they call it a caching appliance. My personal opinion, I, it sounds to me like like it's primary storage because in, because what they're doing in, in a lot of cases is they're using this caching appliance um, as a as a point to restore from. I don't know. I guess the the definition becomes a, a little gray between local storage and caching appliance, but uh, it becomes a little more clear, I suppose, when you look at these caching appliances in the in from the aspect that some of them are physical appliances. Okay. Others are virtual machines, an OVF file that I throw into my infrastructure. Well, now that tells me the caching appliance in that case becomes my own storage infrastructure. Um, so I, I guess really throw your own definition in there and, uh, and, and is this thing a local storage or, or not. Um, but again, you need an enabling device uh, uh, in most cases, and at least in the ones that I've seen. They call this a hybrid method of, uh, of cloud storage. Um, there's a couple of companies uh, um, that, that were that were very, well, that's a very very good. Uh, Panzura um, and Twinstrata. The, the folks that I spoke to at both of those companies, um, specifically, uh, particularly the Panzura uh, person that I spoke with, very 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 friendly, very knowledgeable. In fact, when I was speaking with the rep, um, Steve uh, was the gentleman's name. The uh, the owner of the company, I think it was the owner of the company or the president of the company, was walking by his office at the same time. Stepped in the office when, when he heard uh, Steve and I talking, and, uh, and 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 proceeded to have a dialogue with me and, and teach me um, about cloud and teach me about their solution. Even when he went so far as to, to tell me that even if they're not the solution for me, maybe this one is, maybe this one is, and, and actually gave me a bunch of literature, um, gave me a bunch of names of of, uh, of companies. Um, and Steve uh, was even willing to give me his contact at, uh, at Amazon Web Services uh, to tell me a little more about their Glacier uh, uh, cloud uh, project, um, the cloud cloud service offering. So I mean, and, uh, and that me says quite a, quite a lot because he, he's he's selling somebody else's product in that case. So let's talk about this a little bit. So Glacier, for those of you who don't know, is Amazon's new service. It's a deep archive service, essentially. It's as Paul said, it's a dollar, a penny a per, per gigabyte per month. So the, the price is right, um, right. but it's not designed for retrieval. It's really right. designed for, you know, you right. put it there and you may never see it again. But but I wonder, uh, and then of course you, you're talking about the Panzor and the Twin Strata, which would be a, 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 a gateway and a cloud on ramp essentially, writing, you know, uh, translating to Amazon's APIs, which is the other thing that you've got to do, you know, RESTful APIs. So. Paul, I wonder if you could address that that glacier notion of sort of deep archive. Is this the type of data that you sort of hope to never have to get back again, um, or is it? Is and, it and that's a, go ahead. That's a very good point. Um, the, the, I guess the first thing that I should clarify is that I'm trying to find a uh, a disaster recovery uh, repository. Now, <coughs> right. Excuse me. In my case. Since I'm looking for, for a disaster recovery repository, um, li, li, seriously, I'm, I'm looking at, at secondary backup storage. The AWS, uh, the Glacier project, actually fits very, very nicely into that. So to, to, your, uh, to your question, no, 
I hope to never ever touch this again because that would mean that the, that the big meteor dropped down on on my office and probably took me out with it. Um, my hope is is, is, is that, that that never happens. But um, yes, the Amazon glacier is more of a long term archiving repo repository um, as opposed to a uh, a live um, cloud storage. Um, well, uh, a live exactly that I suppose a live a live cloud storage destination. Yeah, it's not an active archive. One, it's, a, one it's, thing a, that, it's a deep archive right. that, that you, right. you're hoping you never have to get to. And, and we're not talking about restoring applications. Exactly. We're not re talking about restoring applications. We're talking about restoring data, recovering data. Yeah, and Amazon will of course charge you uh, restoration costs depending upon how fast you want to get it back and how much data. So you're I'm sure well aware of that. Well, they're not the only one. Yeah, They're of course. not the only ones. Right. Let, let me clarify that. There, there are additional charges when you uh, when you subscribe to to some sort of a cloud service provider. In addition to the to the uh, to the appliances and the and the stuff that you need to buy, you need to pay for the support. You need to pay for the product of uh, the appliance. You need to pay for what they call puts. You need to pay for what they call gets. And in addition, you're going to pay for uh, bandwidth charges, uh, depending on how much data you're sending across the pipe. They may uh, they may they may charge you uh, based on on, on the amount um, that they're sending. Um, interestingly enough, and this is kind of funny, the uh, the initial backup, of course, is going to is going to take the longest of, of all of them. Some of the providers that, that I've looked at actually will ship you an appliance for the initial uh, streaming of of of, of, uh, of data, the initial backup, and uh, and and then you send it back to them, and 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 that's how they do their cloud service. It's 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 really been an adventure to learning. Um, all of the different techniques that these different programs. Yeah, you're, you're right. Seeding, okay. seeding the cloud is oftentimes one of the hardest right. things to do, right. and, and it's a one-time uh, activity, but it's, it's time-consuming, and the different suppliers have different ways to throttle up or throttle down the pace at which you seed. And, but that's a big deal, obviously, getting, getting your data into the cloud. Yeah, and in your case, we're talking about three terabytes. We're not talking about you know, a mid-size or a large company where you've got tens or hundreds of, of terabytes. So. Yeah, but so, even three terabytes would take a that, while. That's right. what I'm saying. So, <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. At three terabytes, it's an issue. What is Imagine. it when you get to 30 to 100 or, or 200? So, so that's interesting. Ask yeah, I, 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 wanted, but I, I wanted to stop for a second because I, I, I want to make sure that uh, people on the phone have an opportunity to ask some questions of, of you, Paul, or, or, or anyone else that's... Uh, uh, that's Hi, Paul. This is Scott Lowe. Um, I do have a couple of questions for you. You know, I, I was a CIO in a um, small environment for quite a long time. Do you find that working in a small environment um, it puts you at a, a sort of a disadvantage when you're working with some of these companies? Like, they're wor more used to working with, um, with quote-unquote, real enterprise companies versus the SMB, or has that not been much of a factor? Scott, thank you very much for asking that question. Um, um, first of all, hi, thank you very much, big fan. Um, and the, 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 there's a company that, the, that I ran into uh, that was recommended to me called uh, Nasuni. And they, they sell what sounds to be uh, a typical product. Um, it's not very unique uh, in any way, I don't think. Um, but what was really interesting to me was, was the, uh, the person that I spoke to um, about more information, the person that I, that I called for more information seemed to go out of her way to try to talk me out of their product. When she found out that, that we were an SMB, um, she didn't do a whole lot to try to sell the product. She did a lot more to try to talk me out of their solution. Um, did she direct you to really something else? Sure what, did, did she direct no, you to No, and then that was the interesting part. She wanted to get me off the phone as quickly as possible. I, I'm not quite sure what, what sales technique that was, but uh, it didn't work. <laughs> Um, <laughs> You're not a prospect. Yeah, on to the next yeah, one no, technique. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and Scott, thank you again for that question. But uh, but I think because we are a small business, um, maybe folks don't don't want to deal with us because they don't see us as, as being any kind of viable source of revenue for them. Certainly not long term revenue. But um, yeah. Now, when also when you know when you're looking at the the cloud service providers, you talked about a number of times. There's a there's a charge for this, there's a charge for that, there's a charge for, you know, puts and gets, there's a charge for bandwidth. Do you, do you feel like that you may be jumping into this and be kind of like, okay, when we get our first bill, who knows what we're going to see? Um, because it's really kind of tough it's, to predict. It's like the first um, iPhone bill. 
like I like the idea. I like the idea that Panzura had. I think I think it was they had they had a, a one flat fee, uh, nineteen cents per gig per month. Um, that covered their support, their product, all your puts, all your guests. Um, unfortunately, that that puts it out of my pricing range. Uh, nineteen cents is just a little bit too much. Yeah, that's that's, that's a lot. I can understand that. Yeah, and Panzora is, you know, they're they're considered an enterprise grade, you know, company. So you're going to pay a little bit more for for those guys for sure. Yeah. How about Nirvonics? Have you looked into the, the Nirvonics cloud? Uh, no, I have not seen Nirvonics. Um, I've got uh, I've got five different cloud providers uh, that uh, that I was that I was looking at, and Nirvonics is one of them. Amazon is the other. Um, that, that seem to be doing well. Google Cloud, uh, I want to look at HP Cloud and Rackspace as a cloud as well. Um, I don't know cost-wise where any of them stand, but uh, or if, or if any of them have an enabling device that uh, that they sell with their service or not. You not you're not looking at Oracle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, another it company come um, called <laughs> saw last week um, was was Riverbed. They're not going to be a, a necessarily an SMB play, but um, they do have a virtual appliance that wasn't horrendously pricey. Um, that that uh, white water product. Yes. Yeah. The Terra was another one that that actually seems to be um, they, they they seem to won a lot of awards. They spent a lot of attention. C T E R A. Has anyone heard of that one? And Store Simple can you, is can another you one that got a lot of attention. Can you say that what you said? Uh, did you say Centera or Cetera? Cetera, C T E R A. C -T -E -R -A. That one uh, seems to have won some awards and gotten some attention. Store Simple uh, was mentioned a lot um, by folks that I spoke to. Yeah, Cetera, uh, 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 Store Simple, Cetera Cloud mm -hmm. Network. Cetera Networks. Uh, Again, just a reminder to those who yeah, are on the phone that aren't speaking, uh, yeah. please mute your no line. Problem. Star six to mute your line. We've got one. Uh, that's right. We've got one uh, loud line there. Star six to mute, please. Um, for anyone else on the phone, and one of the one of the goals here was to, to was to try to uh, help identify any other players that uh, uh, Paul should uh, look at. And any other issues that he needs to consider, um, uh, anyone uh, want to contribute here? Oh, um, uh, you know, I think it's, um, I think it was Dave Vellante that responded when you mentioned you were looking at Amazon Glacier, but for our another time back, it sounds like from a recovery time perspective, Glacier might not be. Um, you know, uh, uh, whoever's speaking, uh, uh, who's speaking, please? This is Scott. Oh, hey, Scott. Sorry, it was, uh, you were cutting out a little bit. Okay. Yeah, so, Scott, um, are you asking the RPO, RTO question? I am asking that. I know that yeah. that was a little bit discussed before, but if, if you, um, Paul, like, basically said, you know, does your company have a formal um, policy on, on, on basically recovery time, recovery point objective um, when, there's a, when there's some kind of an yeah. outage or something that takes place? No, we, we, we don't have a uh, an objective beyond it needs to be faster than it was the last time. Uh, that was, it was about 24 hours it took to recover uh, manual server rebuild. So uh, the, the expectation, uh, fortunately for me, is that the bar has been set kind of low. Um, anything that I could do that's uh, going to be better than that is uh, is going to be uh, is going to be a success. Um, I, I do understand and and to to speak to that the uh, the the cost piece of it. Does have a lot to do with the amount of uh, of time to recovery. The the Amazon cloud, uh, from what I've been able to see, actually they offer the slowest service of all of them. Um, and that being being uh, the case, maybe that's not the solution for for somebody that wants to use uh, wants to use it for primary backup storage. Um, but for me, I, I think it's going to work well because I'm not looking for that that kind of performance. I'm looking for for the archiving piece of it and the, the lower cost solutions seems to make sense. Some, some of the hosting providers and sort of regional resellers who are building out uh, private hosting environments or managed services environments um, 
are starting to offer services where they not only do they